In this video, I will show you how to do survival analysis in Stata. Before you proceed, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos, introducing survival analysis and showing the example that we will be doing here. I have opened up the Stata program and I have already executed the first part of it. So let's go ahead and look at the data first. And this is how survival data looks like. Our dependent variable would be a combination between the time and our time would be this spell of how long it takes for someone to find a job. And here is 5 periods, 13 periods, 21 periods, 3 periods, and so on. And the event here is finding a job, which is 1 if you found a job and 0 if you did not find this full-time job. One thing to notice here is that I actually changed this variable from being called sensor1 in the, in the original data to event because this, uh, these are really not censored observation. These are the events of people finding a full-time job. And some of the independent variables that we're going to be using would include whether or not they have had unemployment insurance, a zero one variable. We will also use their log wage and we will also use age, which is um, a little bit down the line right here, age. These would be our independent variables. And that's how survival data looks like. It has the number of periods and whether the event has happened for them or not, that would be an opposite variable of a sensor variable whether or not we lost them uh, without knowing whether they have experienced the event or not. Okay, so the first thing to do is define the global variables uh, in your when you do your own program, the time variable, for me, it's called spell. Yours could be any time periods, months, years, and so on. And the event, in my data it happened, I called it event, but yours may be called find a job or something like that. And the X list of independent variables, I have log wage, unemployment insurance, and age. And I'm going to have this group of whether or not people have had unemployment insurance. So if you do change uh, how your data is called here and where it's located, as well as you specify these things, what's the time variable, the event variable, the independent variables, and the group variables for you, the rest of the program should be running uh, for you. The first thing to do is uh, describe the data. And uh, we can see uh, these are the periods of jobless, uh, two-week intervals. One, uh, the event variable is a one if they're re-employed at full-time job, and then we have uh, the other independent variables defined here. Scrolling down a little bit, when we summarize the data, we have the spell on average is 6.24. The event happens for 32% of the subjects in the sample, and so on. So the next key thing to do is set the data as survival time and we do this with the command st set and you provide the time variable here these are the periods that you need to provide here uh, the duration variable and then comma failure and for the failure you need to provide the event here so not the censoring uh, part but just the event has the event happen or not does the failure you know what's the failure variable in your case the next thing to do is use SD describe for survival time uh, describe and we have um, we have um, these uh, here these numbers so the number of subject is 3343 and time at risk is 20,887 and we have each of them um, has been observed between 1 and 28 periods so if you sum this up over all the all the subjects we have these number of periods uh, in the sample the failures are 1073 so this would be 
the number of subjects experiencing um, the event and the time at risk is coming from right here and the incidence rate is calculated as uh, how many have had this failure divided over the total number of periods in the study. So we have a 5.13% uh, as the incidence rate for our, for our sample. Okay, so I have executed the program until now and we're ready to graph the different, um, different components for the non-parametric um, estimation. So the first thing to do is uh, STS graph and then graph the hazard ratio. So I'm going to highlight this and execute the command and this is the graph that we have. So notice that the scale is from 0.03 to 0.04 so we have this hazard rate going down particularly over the last periods. So we have as the time goes on people are less likely to experience the event which means less likely to find a job that's actually a bad bad thing next thing that we can um, draw is the uh, cumulative hazard ratio so summary summer summing up these hazard rates over time and that's uh, done by using this similar commands as before we're just specifying instead of hazard the cumulative hazard once we run this one, uh, we would see a graph that's uh, at least non-decreasing, uh, and we're summing up those cumulative hazard. Uh, we're summing up those hazard rates over time. Next one to do is the Kaplan-Meier su survival curve, and that's done by using the survival option here, highlighting it and executing it. This is the survival estimates. They always start at one because we have the full sample in the beginning. And as time goes on, they're going down to, I think 31% is the, the uh, sample that's remaining at the end of the study that has not experienced the event. And you can say that it, for uh, during period number 10, uh, about, let's see, 60% of the sample are still surviving, meaning they have not found the job. So the next thing that you can do is you can list uh, the survival function and you can do this with STS list comma survival and when you highlight and run this command um, you have uh, you have the table that I have copied in the in the handout and you have all the time periods from 1 to 28. Uh, we have the total number of the begin of people beginning in the sample, how many experienced failure in the first period and how many you lost. And this is the survival function that we are plotting over time. That's how I knew it comes down to 31% at the end of the study. So it's strictly non-increasing. It could stay the same, but it's non uh, if we have no events in a certain period, but it's non-increasing. Next thing that we can do is uh, graph the Kaplan-Meier survival curves for the two groups, and you can do uh, STS graph by group. And our two groups, if you remember here, are whether or not they have had unemployment insurance from up above. So if I run this, here is the survival estimates. Here, this graph is for the people that don't have this unemployment insurance, and this is for those that do. So notice one interesting thing is if we look at period number 10 and you track it up, those that have unemployment insurance have much higher um, survival rates of, say, 75% than those that don't, which is about 50%. So if you do receive unemployment insurance, you're actually, seems like you're you're more likely to be still surviving, which is not a good thing um, because you're still unemployed and don't have a job. The next thing that you can do is you can test for the equality of the survival function using STS test for different groups. And these are the results that we find here. Uh, we have a significant, um, significant value here and so we have significant difference between 
those uh, survivor functions. So this was how to do non-parametric estimation. The next thing is to consider parametric estimation and I'm going to go ahead and run all of the models right now and then I will scroll back up okay so that's where we were and we would continue the first parametric model to consider is the exponential regression coefficients and the hazard rates and that is accomplished by using the ST reg and you put the X list here so these are the independent variables that you're listing, which is the log wage, unemployment insurance, and age. Notice that in this regression, there is no need to put the dependent variable. There is no Y variable here because it's a combination, actually, of two variables, the time and the whether or not the event has happened. So there's no dependent variable in, in this model. And then put comma, no hazard rates and distribution, equal, uh, distribution is exponential. And to get the hazard rates, you basically put comma and then you, put, you, you don't use the, the command no hazard rates and this would give you the hazard rates. So how do you interpret those results? If you look at them, uh, the way to say this, this coefficient here, and that's a little counterintuitive with the survival models, is that individuals that have higher wages have lower unemployment duration, which means that they would terminate the employment faster. And those individuals that claim unemployment insurance, they have higher unemployment durations, which means that they will terminate the unemployment slower. So in general, when you see a positive coefficient, you want to say higher, but you're saying lower durations here. So you're going the opposite. So when you have a negative coefficient, you're saying that they have higher unemployment durations. The way to interpret the um, hazard rates, and you see here it says hazard ratio, is that uh, when you have um, individuals who have one unit higher of log wage, they would have 60% um, uh, they would have about 62% increase in hazard rates. Or if they have unemployment insurance, they would have a uh, one, it would be the 0.34 minus one, so it'd be 66% lower hazard rates. So if you have unemployment insurance, you're actually having lower hazard rates by 66 percent so that means that those that claim unemployment insurance if they have a lower hazard rate they're less likely to find a job so see that this result is very consistent with what we found using the non-parametric models where we graphed the two survival survival curves okay so this is how you interpret the the parameters and the um, hazard ratios. So next one for the Weibull distribution, uh, everything is the same as before, only that you have Weibull here instead of exponential. And with Gompertz, the same thing. The commands are the same, you just put Gompertz here. And if you scroll down, coefficients and everything interpretations are very, very similar. They all also have these uh, parameters here for their distributions, but um, the interpretations of the coefficients are very, very similar. So the last thing to do is the semi-parametric model that we, I talked about in the lecture, and this is the Cox proportional hazards model, the coefficients and the, and the hazard rates, and this is accomplished by using the ST Cox, and again, you just put your X variables here, and no need to put any Y variables, comma, no hazard ratios or hazard ratios. And these are the numbers uh, that you get. And again, the interpretations, even the coefficient magnitudes are very similar to what we had before. Uh, so again, all these four models that I have here produce almost um, identical, almost identical results. So this was how to do survival analysis using Stata. Thank you for watching.